Morning. Still ahead, our Max Massey is live with details about the San Antonio Food Bank mega site donation. Plus, a restaurant manager robbed, beaten, and shot overnight. Katrina Weber shares with us why police say the money wasn't enough. And we're seeing some beautiful weather today, but things change a little bit as we get later into this week. Some storms in the forecast. We've got the latest. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. With more than 2,800 confirmed cases and 38 deaths, communities all across the state are feeling the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Today, Governor Greg Abbott will be giving an update on the COVID-19 response here in Texas. That conference is going to be around 2 this afternoon at the state capitol. The Texas Department of Health Services Commissioner, the Texas Division of Emergency Management, and the Texas Education Agency Commissioner are all going to be in attendance. We will be carrying that press conference live right here on KZ12 and we'll be streaming it online. Meantime, here in Bear County, we have 168 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 63 are travel related cases, 57 community transmission, 22 still under investigation. There have been 42 hospitalizations with 13 patients in intensive care and 11 patients on ventilators. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says of the 168 COVID-19 cases, 44 patients have made a full recovery so far. Six people have died. The mayor will provide an update during his daily briefing later this evening that we will be carrying on KSAT 12 News at 6. Meantime, there is a new interactive dashboard that'll make it easier for you to track and view coronavirus cases here in Bear County. That dashboard provides residents with a detailed breakdown of information about COVID-19 in a easy and easy to re read and understand format. The interactive tool available in desktop or mobile platforms. You can view this dashboard on the city's website, but also on KSAT.com. We also have an interactive map on our website that tracks cases all across the state of Texas. All this information in the coronavirus section of our website. And during this pandemic, families across the country and across Bear County are feeling the effects. To help out our neighbors, the San Antonio Food Bank is hosting the first of two mega site donations that are set for just this week. Max Massey joins us live now from the Alamo Dome. So, Max, we know the line's been long, at least when you were there live at 9 o'clock. It was very long. wonder if it's still long now. Well, right now, things have calmed down substantially. Take a look behind me. We still have a lot of volunteers here, but earlier today, there were seven lines of cars. Right now, just a, a few vehicles still coming in, but guys, people were here all throughout the morning. We had vehicles lining up as early as midnight, dark and early. We talked to them with more than 1,200 people expected to pick up donations today. Take a look. I need food. And what the food bank's doing a good job. Victor Purcell was one of the first people in line this morning. He waited from midnight to 10 a.m. and was one of more than 1,000 people registered to show up. Hey, can everybody go to this station, please? Three and three, please. We probably got a half a million dollars worth of food here. When this thing starts, we're going to go through a half a million dollar food in about two hours. This pandemic is not only putting a strain on our local families, but it's also putting a strain on the food bank, who is out here trying to help. Right now, there's not opportunities, so we've had to buy food, and when we're buying food, it's dollar for dollar. So the, the cost of a meal is about two twenty-five, dollars and that's versus 14 cents like we would normally pay. Today, with more than 100 volunteers out here, it's all about neighbor helping neighbor. It's an upside down world at the moment, and I think it's just going to take time and patience and really everybody sacrificing. As for Victor, he remains optimistic for the future. Everything working out fine. And the next mega site donation distribution is set for this coming Friday. If you have any questions on how to register, which you need to do if you plan to come and get that donation, or if you want to volunteer, we have that information right now. Just head to caseout.com. David, Ursula. Thank you, Max. New at noon, Frost Bank has announced that it will donate $2 million to several Texas charities in an effort to help curb the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Here in San Antonio, Frost will distribute $1 million to nonprofit organizations. The rest of the money will go to organization in several cities. Frost is also giving operation grants totaling to more than 600,000. 
They'll be going to nonprofits responding to the pandemic, and people and businesses affected by the pandemic may also be eligible for loans and other assistance that Frost is offering. You can find more information on our website. Just click on this story on our homepage. As the number of confirmed coronavirus cases continues to rise in the United States, so are unemployment claims. Business owners and workers are increasingly feeling the financial squeeze, desperate for the government aid to arrive. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington with the effects COVID-19 is having on politics. The coronavirus health crisis quickly morphing into an economic one. Moody's Analytics chief economist Mark Zandi projecting four and a half million new unemployment claims could be reported this week, while major retailers like Macy's and The Gap are furloughing employees. Travel and other service industries have seen a steep decline in demand, and businesses and families are desperately waiting for financial relief from that $2 trillion stimulus package which includes extended unemployment benefits and checks for millions of Americans. Both of our incomes for our bills just uh, were taken away from us. President Trump maintains he's taken swift action from the very beginning to curb coronavirus effects. This is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. But the president at times gave messages that his own health experts disagreed with. And again, when you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero. Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi with a stark rebuke for the president on CNN Sunday. So we should be taking every precaution. Uh, what the president, his uh, denial at the beginning uh, was deadly. In an interview on Fox and Friends, Trump responded. Uh, sad thing. Look, she's a uh, sick puppy, in my opinion. She really is. She's got a lot of problems, and that's a horrible thing to say. Meanwhile, over the weekend, President Trump reversed his call to reopen businesses by Easter and instead extending the White House guidelines on social distancing until the end of April. I think that's doing well. I mean, I, I see, I look at the streets. You look at New York where there's, I look down Fifth Avenue, Today, they were showing a shot of Fifth Avenue and sort of prime time, and there was almost nobody on Fifth Avenue. I've never seen that before. The House Speaker says a fourth phase of stimulus legislation could be in the works, and that House Democrats want to boost funding for states that so desperately need it, as well as add another round of cash payments for Americans. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. In other news this noon, it seems that money just wasn't enough. San Antonio police say someone also beat up and shot the manager of a northeast side restaurant during a late night robbery. They are still looking for that shooter today. And as Katrina Weber reports, the manager is in a hospital recovering from what had to be a frightening and painful experience. The doors of this pizza hut were closed, yet police say a robber with a gun still found a way in late last night. They found the manager here in the 14,600 block of Nacogdoches suffering from a gunshot wound in her belly. As she was rushed to a hospital, officers pieced together what happened just after 1130 last night. They say the robber caught the 46-year-old woman as she went out the back door, then forced her back inside where he assaulted and shot her. Another woman who knows her told me off camera the manager most likely was alone waiting for a delivery when the robber took advantage of that and tried to take her life. Police say they searched this area but did not find the shooter. I couldn't help but notice here in the daylight that there are signs on the door saying they have cameras here working 24 hours a day, so it's possible they could hold some clues for police. Reporting from the Northeast Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Two local school districts have new superintendents. Randolph Field and Southside ISD both making their announcements yesterday afternoon. Dr. Brian Holt is the new superintendent for Randolph Field. He has more than 20 years of experience as an educator and an administrator from pre-K to college. And for Southside ISD, Rolando Ramirez is the lone finalist for superintendent. Right now, Ramirez serves in that same role at Valley View Independent School District in Far, Texas. If approved formally after a state mandated 21 day waiting period, the Southside ISD board will formally name him superintendent for the district. Still coming up this half hour, the NFL thought they had a collective bargaining agreement with their players, but maybe not so fast. And celebrating 25 years of the Queen of Tejano. Up next on the News at Noon, what the family of Selena Quintanilla had to say about her lasting legacy.
On this day, 25 years ago, Selena was tragically killed in Corpus Christi. Since then, her legacy has grown, and she's now a cultural icon here. Eric Hernandez shares more about her legacy and why she is the most celebrated Mexican-American artist. It's a lasting legacy that will never fade. Selena was just about to be 23 when she was taken too soon in 1995. Since then, her popularity has grown and she continues to break records. I've always said that in Selena's case, it was never just the music, it was the person. People love Selena. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so the constant realization of what this means to a lot of people, you know, the love story, the um, her, the family, you know, being together and working hard and the struggle. Um, I think it's an amazing thing and um, I'm proud to be attached to it in the way that I am. Selena broke many barriers and is the number one selling Latin artist of all time with 70 million records sold worldwide. And most recently, her 1990 album, Ven Conmigo, was inducted to the National Recording Registry of the Library of Congress. I don't want to misquote my sister, but she said, um, the goal isn't to live to forever, but to create something that will. And I truly believe that she has done that without even realizing what she, what she left behind. KSAT 12 will be honoring the life and legacy of Selena next month. On April 12th, Siempre Selena will air at 9 p.m. For more on her life and legacy, just head to our website, ksat.com slash Selena. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Let's get outside with live cam. Better enjoy today. It's an absolutely perfect day, but things will be changing, huh? Yes, they will. As we get towards the end of the week, we're going to see some thunderstorms starting to come back into play. But enjoy the next couple days because the weather outside right now is great. 71 degrees as we speak. Aquifer is down about a tenth of a foot to 671 even in your pollen count. Some great news here. Yes, oak is still high, but it is down significantly from where it was yesterday. 3,670. Mold jumped up a little bit into the moderate category. Mulberry, pecan, hackberry also there. We'll talk about that storm potential coming up. We are looking at some sun today, which is nice after that murky day we had yesterday. Yes, quite a bit of sun. In fact, some drier air feels really, really it good. Does. We'll take this a couple days of this, guys, and then uh, we're going to switch over to this more rainy pattern uh, to finish out the week. Let's start with the sunrise this morning. As we look at the time lapse, ooh, it was Whoa. nice. We had some high clouds made for some beautiful colors. 71 degrees right now. We've got a dew point of 52. Ooh. And that is uh, putting us in the dry category. North northeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour, and the winds have been a little bit breezy from time to time. Very little cloud cover here across Bear County, but we do notice some clouds as you look off to the east and up around New Braunfels. But those are beginning to scatter out as well. And because of those clouds, temperatures actually a little bit cooler up there around New Braunfels and Seguin in the 60s there still. We've made it into the 70s here around San Antonio. And zooming out some, there are some 80s on the map. You get down towards Catula, it's 82 degrees there. 81 in Carrizo Springs, a little cooler up across the hill country, still in the 60s in uh, many spots there. Uh, wind gusts show that uh, we're gusting up to about 17, 20 miles per hour. That's going to be common through the afternoon. These winds will die down some tonight, but we've got a pretty good stout northerly wind behind that front that moved through overnight. And with that front, we got the drier air, and that makes all the difference in the world. We've got dew points now in the low 50s here in town, 40s and 30s out west. That's in the dry and very dry category. Uh, we'll get that today and tomorrow. And then, as I mentioned, it, it does change a little bit. There's a 24-hour uh, dew point temperature change. We're talking about 10-degree difference here. And again, that makes a huge difference when you walk outside. You can really feel it. Dew points going into the future here. Dry today, dry tomorrow, but by Thursday, here comes the moisture. It's back in place, dew points in the 60s. And by Friday, we'll be looking at dew points closing in on 70. That's going to set the stage for some thunderstorms as a cold front uh, moves into the area. And we'll show you that in just a second. First storm system moving away. Showers and storms. In fact, there is some severe weather associated with this as it's moving towards uh, Georgia this afternoon and the Carolinas. Probably a few more strong storms as that storm system moves away. We're in between storms here. Our next one is up here across the Pacific Northwest. It's not going to move through, but it'll move 
uh, to our north and force a cold front through. And that is the uh, factor that's going to bring those thunderstorms into play. So the future cast shows that by tomorrow, maybe a slight uptick in cloud cover. Not a big deal, just some high clouds. Thursday, we'll get a dry line setting up. Typically, dry lines don't help to create a whole lot of uh, shower and storm activity, but they can produce some. So we're going to keep some rain chances in the forecast. Could see a couple of thunderstorms Thursday. And then on Friday, here comes the front and the rain chances really do increase. And there will be the potential for a couple strong storms. So that'll be something to watch very closely, especially Friday afternoon and Friday evening. Uh, we'll be watching it for you here at KSAT. Forecast for today, 77 degrees by 2 o'clock, 79 4 o'clock. High temperature today right around 80 degrees, mostly clear skies tonight. And tomorrow morning will feel really nice once again. 52 to start your Wednesday, 79 for a high, 75 Thursday, 30% chance of rain, 60% chance though on Friday. And we'll keep those rain chances going right on into the weekend. Some slight chances Saturday and uh, look for temperatures in the upper 70s on uh, Sunday too with uh, another chance for some showers and storms. Good growing weather. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a spring-like pattern we're shifting into here. Thanks, Justin. Get your kids out there and see if they grow. What if uh, none too happy with the new collective bargaining agreement? He wants a do-over. And the Spurs, DeMar DeRozan, trying to help folks get through this rough patch of staying at home. Coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Talk about creating a little chaos. Free agent safety Eric Reed wants the NFL's new collective bargaining agreement invalidated, and he's calling for an investigation and a revote. In a letter to the NFL Players Association, according to ESPN, Reed's lawyers contend after passing the agreement, language posted on the Players Association website contains language different from the one in the players that they signed off on. In particular, the difference in wording is in the section about the league's disability plan that affects hundreds and potentially thousands of ex-players who applied for Social Security disability insurance payments before January 1st, 2015. In the version the players received and approved, those offsets only applied to players who applied after January 1st, 2015. Declined comment and the Players Association is withholding comment until they have a chance to review the provision that agreement passed by a narrow margin, 1,019 yes votes to 959 no votes. The Spurs star DeMar DeRozan trying to help all of us deal with the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. The Spurs leading scorer joining Dr. Kenza Gunter, a licensed clinical sports psychologist, on how to maintain a positive attitude and the importance of mental health during this time. We got the greatest platform of yes. in history to be able to connect, be connected to everybody. Take advantage of it. Find the positivities, the laughter, and, and, and everything that's out there for us to be able to enjoy. And yes. we can all do it from our phone and not feel alone. In the meantime, the golfing landscape on San Antonio's southeast side is going to look a little different after May 3rd as the 212-acre property that encompasses the Republic Golf Club is being shut down and then sold. Although no set plans for the site have been announced, a project team will work with surrounding property owners, community members, and the city regarding the development of the property. Jessica Hunt has more for us. One of the beautiful public treks in uh, San Antonio. I'm sad to hear that they're going to permanently close it down. So I'm trying to get out here as much as I can before it, before it closes down. <laughs> After 18 years, the Republic Golf Club announced earlier this month the property is being sold and will close permanently May 3rd. It's tragic, right? Because this is a, an area where it's not, it's, it's very affordable. It's well maintained. I think Incarnate Ward is here as well where they practice. So it's it's sort of depressing. The club serves as the practice course for both the men's and women's UIW golf teams and the school's golf management program is housed next door. But most importantly, the course fulfills an important need in the community as it is one of the only golf offerings on the city's south side. It's tough for people to live in, in South San Antonio, that's for sure. Definitely gonna have to drive and, 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 and go elsewhere from, from here on out, which is a shame. I definitely think it's gonna hurt some people, yes. I'm sure there's a lot of seniors we see that are often hanging out in the clubhouse 
uh, that are probably going to be affected by it. In an official press release, ownership sites consistently declining revenue over the last several years as the primary reason for closing. This is due in large part to the outstanding success of the Alamo City Golf Trail. This news follows national trends. Approximately 100 to 200 golf courses closed across the U.S. annually since 2009. First of all, I was shocked. But then second of all, I looked at it and it's a business and you can't keep operating a business and losing money. Future development plans for the property will be addressed in the coming months. Golfing in general, uh, golfing has really gone down. Rather than going up, it's gone down. So you're having less courses to try to make any kind of money. Although upset, patrons will have to make the best of the closing of a beloved course. It's very disappointing, very, very disappointing. But, you know, life goes on, everybody has to do what they have to do. They're going to find another place to play. You get divorced, you'll be married, right? Same thing here. That was Jessica Hunt reporting. Now, the course is still open daily during the stay home, work safe order. The Republic closes in a little over a month. That was a good track, too. It was, it was tough. It is? Yeah. It's not an easy golf course from back in the back from the tips. Oh, yeah? So, but it's going to be missed. It's a good, good course. You know it, working from home can be stressful, especially if you are not taking care of your body. Just ahead, a few tips on how to train to strain your body less. Also new today at five with things like, say disinfectants and household cleaners flying off the shelves, your first thought might be to make your own, but a warning, proceed with caution. Mixing certain chemicals can be extremely dangerous. Marilyn Moritz is going to explain what is safe, what is not, Today at 5 after entertainment tonight. New today involving the coronavirus pandemic, the Mexican president, Andrés López Obrador, asked his citizens to follow measures put in place to prevent the spread after health officials declared the country's health emergency. Authorities also suspended all non-essential activities in all sectors. So far, Mexico has more than 1,000 cases of the virus. The United States continues to lead the world in the highest number of confirmed cases of COVID-19. The virus now ravaging multiple communities across the country. And in some places, law enforcement is enforcing penalties against those ignoring stay at home and social distancing restrictions. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from New York. New York City is still seeing a surge of novel coronavirus cases and Governor Andrew Cuomo now issuing an urgent plea. I am asking healthcare professionals across the country, if you don't have a healthcare crisis in your community, please come help us in New York now. This as the U.S. Navy's hospital ship, the Comfort, sailed past the Statue of Liberty, docked in Manhattan, and is taking patients today. A thousand hospital beds ready to care for overflow patients who are not infected with novel coronavirus, while a field hospital set up in the city's famed Central Park starts taking patients who do have COVID-19. But the emergency systems in New York City are still inundated. The call volume now is higher than it was after 9-11. And across the country, the virus is devastating communities. At a Massachusetts Veterans Affairs facility, the Soldiers' Home, 11 veterans have now died. At least five had COVID-19, while 11 others in the home have tested positive. The facility's superintendent now placed on administrative leave. And in Washington state, a choir held a practice March 10th before they learned of social distancing recommendations. Now, nearly three weeks later, 45 of the 60 people who came to that practice have either been diagnosed with COVID-19 or have gotten sick with the symptoms. And three have been hospitalized while two are dead. It can just happen. That's scary. Law enforcement officers are now starting to crack down. A defiant Florida pastor was arrested after continuing to hold Sunday church services in blatant violation of a ban on large gatherings. While the pastor insists he was within his rights. He refused repeated, repeated requests to please don't put four or five hundred people in danger. Hospital workers and first responders continue to find themselves at high risk as well. At the Oregon Health and Science University, 12 staffers have tested positive, with more than 50 still waiting on test results. And here in New York, the number of NYPD officers calling out sick has skyrocketed, while at least one detective has died. Trevor All, ABC News, New York. 
Meantime, doctors in New York are looking for facilities where they can treat coronavirus patients after their hospitals have become overwhelmed. In response, the U.S. Tennis Association says the home of the U.S. Open is slated to become a temporary field hospital in New York. The plan is to build a 350 bed facility at the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows, Queens. A spokesperson says for now, the indoor complex would not likely include any coronavirus patients. A date for the conversion has yet to be announced. The Trump administration is rolling back Obama era mileage standards. The administration released relaxed rules early this morning. They say that by doing this, automakers will save on the cost of new emissions technology, making vehicles cheaper for Americans to buy. But opponents say Americans will spend far more on fuel than they save on the purchase costs of an electric vehicle. Going to take a live look outside with live cam. Look at that pretty day on tap. Get out there and enjoy it safely at yes. a distance at from a your distance. fellow people that's right and i give you that view which is beautiful and i'll raise you this one take a look at this case i connect picture from this morning that is very comforting uh just seeing the you know clouds off in the distance beautiful colors there it was a really really nice morning we had very nice temperatures and we're going to see that again tomorrow morning visible satellite picture shows a lot of the clouds that we had earlier starting to sort of dissipate we're going to see a mostly sunny afternoon which will allow temperatures to jump up close to 80 i think we're already in the low 70s right now and temperatures uh, in the low 70s there around Divine and Hondo mid 70s actually there 74 but 67 Randolph 68 New Braunfels 63 right now Kingdon Lake one of the cool spots out there and the forecast for today up around 80 by 5 o'clock mostly sunny skies very nice evening and then dropping off into the 60s uh, by 10 o'clock we'll see northwesterly winds they'll be a little bit gusty from time to time but they'll calm some tonight and another nice day tomorrow, maybe a little bit more cloud cover than our rain chances kick in. We're going to have another look at those rain chances and time it out for you coming up here in just a few minutes. David. Oh, what a day this is. It is Taco Tuesday. That's why one fast food chain is giving him free. Yep, free tacos on Taco Tuesday. Still ahead where you can grab yours today. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are back at it again. Still ahead when you can expect to stream the three cool bad boys for life from the comfort of your own living room. And looking out for scammers, the warning from the FBI as millions of Americans wait for a $1,200 stimulus check. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. As millions of people adapt to working from home, it's important to remember not to strain your body. In this Medical Minute, CNN's Mandy Gaither shares a few tips on how to make working from home a little less stressful on your body. Working from the dining room, crammed into a small space? You're not alone. To prevent aches and pains, Consumer Reports suggests you start with your chair. The ideal seating position allows your feet to rest on the floor while your pelvis and back fit against the back of the chair. They say this will help support your body and avoid putting undue pressure on your back. Make sure your screen is eye level so that you're gazing slightly downward toward the center of the screen. This may help keep your neck from straining and also help prevent dry eyes, headaches, and blurred vision. Don't cradle your phone between your shoulder and ear. That will tighten up your neck, back, and shoulders. Use earbuds or put it on speaker. If you're working from a bed or couch, sit with your back against the couch, wall, or headboard with two pillows. One horizontal horizontally behind your lower back, one vertically to support your spine, and take breaks. Allow your body to change positions frequently. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And here's another tip. When you're typing, have your elbows bent at a 90 degree angle with your wrists in a neutral position on the keyboard. That way you give your arms some support. We're doing a lot of computer work these days. Good tip. So I have two questions for you real quick. Have you ever walked under a tree with one of those catkin things hanging from the tree and it gets in your head and you're just like freaking out trying to get out of your hair? And uh, this yellow stuff going you're away. You worried that uh, a bird, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like. Uh, yeah, it's no fun. And, and these, this oak pollen has just been ridiculous. Now it did drop off a little bit today. My hope is that as we get some rain maybe later this week and as we get into next week, these numbers will continue to go down. But right now we're right at the peak of oak season. Not so fun. 71 degrees so far today. 56 was the low this morning. Averages are 77 and 54. We'll be right about there today. Average 
as far as temperatures go. And records are 93 and 31. No rainfall today, obviously, but there is some in the forecast. We've got that seven day forecast coming up. As some Americans wait for their $1,200 stimulus checks, the FBI is warning to also be on the lookout for scammers. Yeah, those checks haven't even been printed yet, and crooks already eye on your money. Our R.J. Marquez has the details. Before you've even gotten your stimulus check, a warning from the FBI and several state attorney generals. Don't fall victim to phone calls, texts, emails, or websites that ask for personal or financial information in order to receive your federal payment. Officials say that includes paying someone who calls with a promise to expedite or obtain a payment or loan for you. If you're eligible for relief, you do not need to make any upfront payment or pay a fee to receive your stimulus check. People who file tax returns electronically and provide the IRS with their bank information will likely get their payments earlier through direct deposit. Paper checks are expected to take longer to mail out. You'll receive a notice by mail no later than 15 days after the payment was distributed detailing the amount, how it was sent, and an IRS phone number to call if the funds fail to arrive. Most Americans will receive up to $1,200. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Some employees at Whole Foods are planning a sick out strike today to demand better conditions during the pandemic. Demands include getting double pay for the hazards of working during this outbreak. They're also asking for sick pay for those who chose to self-quarantine and the immediate shutdown of any store where a worker tests positive for the virus. The travel overseas out of the question right now. Sam's Club is bringing some sweet treat favorites to us. The store has just reinvented the American ice cream sandwich with the gelato macaron. Authentic Italian gelato sandwich between light and fluffy French macarons. Is, that, is it macarons or macarons? Macaroon. Macaroon. Because I've seen it pronounced both ways. You think it's macaron? I've never I, heard that. I don't know. I've heard them both ways. So the frozen, if it's good, but does it matter? The frozen goodies come in a variety pack featuring four classic flavors, pistachio, vanilla, chocolate, and caramel. They will only be sold in stores through mid-April, though. And if you're looking for an excuse to get out of the house today, you can head over to Taco Bell and get a free taco. The fast food chain offering a free Doritos Locos taco to everyone in America today. Just go to the drive-thru and pick it up. No purchase is necessary. The chain CEO says it's just a way to say thank you to everyone for showing up in their communities. Taco Bell also donating, by the way, a million dollars to No Kid Hungry. So you get your lunch and your dessert right there. We set you up. See? Taco Tuesday. How nice is that? With a macaroon, not a macaron. Macron. I don't think it's a macaron. I've, it I've heard it both good. ways. You yeah, have? I, yeah, I, I think. If you're in France, France, you would pronounce it Macron. I was trying to take you to France, I guess. Well, yeah, and the president is President Macron. Macron. So it's, it's, oh, oh I see yeah. where that came from. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. At any rate, uh, you're talk. better at weather, Justin. I think I probably am. Let's go outside for you and show you the blue <laughs> skies. Uh, right now, we've got beautiful blue skies with a few thin high clouds working across the sky. That's it. We're going to see a lot of sun today. 71 degrees, current reading 52 to the dew point. And winds round at the north northeast at about 10 miles per hour. They've been a little bit breezy from time to time. And they'll calm some this evening. It's not going to be too windy today, but you will notice some breezes maybe up there around uh, 20 miles per hour. So uh, cloud cover that we have really starting to fade away here. So we're going to see a lot of blue skies for the rest of today. 77 Castroville, 68 Bernie Sage, 74 in Hondo. And then you'll find some 80s down to the south. Pretty warm down there. 86 in Laredo, 82 right now in Carrizo Springs. There's a look at the winds. And we're going to go forward in time here. And you'll notice as we get later into today, these winds really start to calm down. So by about 7 o'clock, We'll be in the five to 10 mile per hour range. You won't really notice it anymore, but those winds kicked in behind a cold front and ushered in some dry air. And that's why it feels so great outside. Dew points are in the low 50s here in town. And then you've got 30s and 40s out west. That is very dry air. Now, as you might imagine, it's not going to last very long. We'll get it today and tomorrow. And then uh, that moisture will start to work back in and we'll get some more humidity and probably some rain showers out of that too. Forecast high temperatures today up around 80 degrees here in San Antonio. You'll find slightly cooler numbers up north and some warmer stuff down to the south and west. Here's the big picture and 
Right now, we're in between storm systems, so pretty quiet. We notice some uh, thin eye clouds working in from the west, and we'll see some of those tomorrow. The storm system that brought the front through, it's now moving towards Carolinas, but it is producing severe weather as it does on the tail end. So places like Georgia and Florida, uh, there's quite a bit of severe weather ongoing there this morning. There was uh, already some tornado warnings out across parts of uh, Alabama earlier, and I would imagine we're going to get some warnings here along this line. Tornado watch box is still in place, and then several severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, Futurecast for us shows that we'll get some more clouds tomorrow, so partly cloudy skies on your Wednesday. By Thursday, dry line sets up. This doesn't do a whole lot for us, but maybe it kicks off a couple showers and storms, and the humidity will be back on Thursday. Friday is the day I want to watch because we'll get a frontal boundary in here. And if it comes through during the afternoon, which it looks like it will, the timing should be right for some storms to brew. And uh, we could see a couple strong storms. So that'll be something to watch Friday afternoon, Friday evening, even into Saturday, depending on where this front sets up. We can see a few more storms flaring up. Uh, forecast for today, 77 degrees by 2 o'clock, 79, 4 o'clock. We'll be up around 80 for a high, mostly clear skies all the way through. 79 tomorrow after starting off at 52. And then 75 Thursday, 30% chance of rain. We up it to a 60% chance on Friday. And then some more chances on Saturday. Uh, again, depending on where that front sets up. And I think we'll have another chance with another disturbance on Sunday. So uh, we're moving into a spring-like pattern. And it's going to make everything pretty green, I think, going forward. Okay. We just got a clarification on the macaroon, macaron. Okay. Uh, from our, our Michael Osterhage, who is an expert on all things food. You would know. He yeah. said they're two different things. Okay, a macaroon is like a cookie that's made out of coconut, like a coconut macaroon. Right. A macaron is what we were showing. You were right. I, it just looked good to me. That's all I really care <laughs> it's about. It's just oh, calories. How does it taste? That's all I care about. Don't worry about pronouncing it. Speeding into the digital world, still ahead of movie for all ages, making its way to the small screen today. Oh, we can use more small screen movies these days. The Rolling Stones are joining in on the live streaming concert fun. Up next, how you can catch their performance series while under quarantine. The COVID-19 outbreak has effectively ended live concert gatherings for now, but a legendary publication still wants to bring live music to audiences. CNN's Rick Damagella explains how Rolling Stone is connecting artists with their fans. It's on a mimic when I talk with old friends a conversation to two girls we knew. Rolling Stone is bringing music to the masses during the COVID-19 pandemic with In My Room. Let's get it together and do it again. Yeah. The performance series was conceived as a way for artists to continue to play for audiences cut off from live music. At this moment, it's not accessible in the same way. Um, so we wanted to give, provide some much needed entertainment for people and give artists a platform to connect with our audience while they're at home experiencing kind of the same challenges and, and crisis that everyone is in. It's just a shot away. It's just a shot away. Music tends to be one of the most unifying elements of society that we have. It's a very powerful medium and carries a very powerful message. Whoa. The inspiration for the name of this series came from a, a, a Beach Boys song, a beautiful song. So uh, to launch it with, with Brian Wilson was very special. And when he performs Love and Mercy, I mean, it almost moved me to, to tears watching it. It's got such a, such a powerful message. It resonates so much in this moment. Streaming in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Mike, we got more time behind us than in front. Man, please. I'm going to be running down criminals till I'm 100. They're back. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence returning in the long-awaited threequel Bad Boys for Life. The action thriller hit digital today, and it arrives on Blu-ray and DVD three weeks from now on April 21st. My planet, people were always after my powers. So I came to yours. Uh, parents, listen up. For kids stuck at home, Sonic the Hedgehog is here. The character speeds onto digital today. However, you're going to have to wait until mid-May to nab the speedy blue guy on Blu-ray or DVD.
Two weeks after it hit digital release, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker arrives on disc. Don't tell my daughter because she's going to make me buy one. It comes with an array of special features, including the Skywalker Legacy, a feature length documentary on the making of the film. There's a contest between you. This is a battle for the brightest minds of America. The Current War, Director's Cut, also available on Blu-ray and DVD this week. The drama is about the battle between Edison Westinghouse and Tesla to dominate the New York City electricity market. It failed to spark much interest in theaters, but the company behind it is hoping to light up home video. It is time to head over to SA Live. We don't know where they're going to be today. They're not in the what? studio. They're not at Market Square. They're self... Are they on uh, the yard? Mm -hmm. We are. There they, they put are. us out here. Because <laughs> it is so beautiful darn day. nice out here. Thank you very much, Mr. Horn, for the beautiful, beautiful right. weather. But, of course, today we are celebrating the legacy of the Queen of Tejano music. And I think back in there was 25 years ago, and I was down here on my job interview just shortly after this date, and I was amazed and blown away by all the tributes. I was coming from Memphis, so it was it was rivaling the tributes to Elvis, basically. Right. Yeah, right. It, it was amazing. So with that, we want to know what's your favorite Selena song and go ahead and show off some dance moves yeah. to it. If you send that to us at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, you may see your moves on the show coming up in just a few minutes. You send it. We'll, we'll <laughs> definitely try and show it. So busting a move from busting a move to simply getting your body moving. My wife, Bonnie, really took our home workout to the next level. And she even incorporated just a few things around the house to make it that much more intense. And staying safe at home means a lot of folks are trying to manage their own beauty and maintenance routine. Our booking producer, Nicole Maddox, tries out a couple of DIY face mask ideas. And we've got some ideas for getting your fix for a good cup of joe. A few coffee shops around town that are still open, so we're going to tell you where you can pick up your pick-me-up. That's coming up on SA Live.